we see older people with no food in their cupboards, snuggled up with loads of layers of clothes, and it's shocking how we treat our older people. You either eat or put your heat on, one of the two. Freeze to death or starve to death. We live downstairs in one room. We stay in the house all day, every day. Cut back on our meals. Can't afford to eat every day. We only eat twice a day. They have lost eight stone in a year from not eating. The heating, it costs more. If I don't put the heating on, I die. I just exist. I don't live. Not really. That's no life. The state pension's not much for a start. Pennies, isn't it? You can't expect you to live on that. John Foster, 76 now. I've been a manual worker all my life, working on the buildings, shipyards. I've been in this house since I was 19. It's 57 years, and I'm still here. And all the rest of my family's gone. We used to have five dogs, one outside, all station in the kennel, and four Yorkshire Terriers in the house. Uh, 30 pigeons in the pigeon loft and uh, we also had a parrot in the house what your man bought. I've got no family and I've never been married or out. Grew was never married, no kids, sister the same. I was taken at school at uh, Manchester it's just, as if it was yesterday. You can't believe to all this, to all this time you know. Families, you know, if you, leave, you lose one or two, it's bad enough. But if once you lose, if you lose all of them and you completely on your own, it's just a nightmare. I kind of believe I'm the last one here. It takes some getting your head round it. You just kind of, uh, you kind of work it out. Do you ever feel sad? You should say, do you ever feel happy? Because I'm sad all the time. I mean, Mum, when you've got no family, you, you're wary, aren't you? You've got to be careful. In the old days, you just put your heating on and you forget about it. You know, you'd be worried about the cost all the time. These my fridge, switched off. I've cleaned it out, look, spotless. My sister used to drink bottles of Coke like that, see? That's the last one she ever had. Look, and I won't, I can't part with it. My fridge has not been on since there's all this electricity's gone up and living the cost of living. I haven't had that on. I've stopped eating the yogurts and the bottle of milk, what I used to have in the fridge, I put it on the back step you know, to keep it cold because it is electricity in it. It's sky high, isn't it? I'll just be paying standing charges because I'm not using any electricity or anything. That, these lights is never on on a night. I just took it out, that's just the way I am. There, yeah, it comes straight on. These bottles, colour gas bottles, they've gone up about £10 since last year. I see that if you use it like one bar, like I'm using it now, it usually lasts four weeks. Well, this is, I'm into the fifth week now. So there can't be much left. Exciting this, isn't it? Exciting lifestyle. Eh? <laughs> Nobody in the house, I'm buying completely on my own. And I haven't even got any relations anywhere out there. The 
it's just, I'm just there, that's it, existing. struggling, Molly was struggling with eating, really. It's not good, Bill. We only have four hours eat a day and it's not enough. We only eat twice a day and I've lost eight stone in the year from not eating. There's no point to our life anymore, there really isn't. Lovely. Freshly bought on Monday. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm 68 years old. I've lived in this flat for 38 years. I mean, now we're tired. I was a cleaner when I was working. Very low paid jobs, like. It was probably reflecting my pension today. £700 a month, every four weeks. Three weeks out of every four I've got, I can manage. The last week before I get paid again, I've got nothing, not a penny. You think you're rich because you get £700 a month, but you're not. You're not. The price of sugar has gone up. It used to be 60p for a £2 bag of sugar. Now it's 90p. Batteries for my radio. It's two ninety nine for four. You should sell them in six packs. You're paying the same for less batteries for a start off. You try to save on your heating. In winter, obviously it costs more, more and more and more. Well, hello. Hello. Are you all right? I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. You had a good weekend this one. Oh yes, good, I did. Good. Yeah. I pay for my gas and electric <laughs> on a PayPal card. I go to the post office every week. I paid £40 on the gas yesterday and £30 on my electric. That was £70 from £150 I took out of the bank. Now that's going to last me, should last me, till next Monday. It's not like the cost of living prices come into effect. The amount of money I get now, it's just not enough to live on. It's just not enough to live a decent enough life. I do worry a lot, like. And worrying doesn't help. My friend told me that. Worrying doesn't help at all. I mean, I'm using more gas and electric now than what I ever used to before. At one time, I never used to think about it. I just used to save, try and just save what I could. But now, it's such a worry. And you've got to pay for it. I'll be paying all year round for my bills. You know, I'm sure I will. No chance of saving up. None whatsoever. It's impossible. I wish I could save a little bit, but I can't. It just doesn't work. I try to be careful. I try. But... This doesn't happen. The longer it's gone on, the worse it seems to get. Yeah, well, be heating. I try to keep it off as long as possible because of the cost. And I mean, this, this room is a big room to heat. And there was a bit of heat through the door and all. That door's not very heat proof. You can feel the draft. You stand on the carpet and you can feel the draft. It doesn't help at all, no. You're putting the heat on for the birds. 
I'm going for free. If I had it for free, I'd have it on all day. <laughs> but you've got to pay for it, and the money's got to come from somewhere. Otherwise, if you don't pay, they come and cut you off. That's what they do. I do go to bed early. I go to bed about 8 o'clock, sometimes half past 7. Just get warm that way. Listen to me radio. Company. Getting no business. Better sitting up and being a bit cold and watching TV or a DVD at the moment, like, you know. Yeah. It's more comfortable in bed with a bottle. Lovely. I could do it now. <laughs> Me heating doesn't seem to keep me as warm as what a hot water bottle does. I put it on my stomach and it gets warm all over and it's cosier and I can sleep better. Because, as you know, you can't sleep when you're cold. If I can't afford me heating, I've had it. Simple as that. I just stay cold. I'm Harry Molyneux, I'm nearly 83 years old. Harry, can you come in now, please? Sorry? Can you come in now, please? Can I come in? Yeah. I live with my wife, Christine, my wife of nearly 59 years come March. You get less for, for, for murder. It's too cold out there. It's not cold it's at all. It's bitter. Oh, it's not. A bit in the army. My husband was stationed in Germany. I was stationed in Boddington in Gloucestershire at the time. Started as pen friends, then met and married quite quickly. There's love at first sight. We were married about three weeks later. Here we are, still together. I can't imagine life without him. I mean, um, I'm continually worried about him, about his health, because I don't think we're, we're keeping warm enough. We don't have the heating on all day like we should do. I, I should have the heating on all day, I should, because I've got a minor heart condition, leaking valves. And they were recommended that you should keep the temperature at least 19, 15 and 12. It's got both, so it's in between. It's a very, it's a very difficult bungalow to, to heat. Um, it's on, on a can concrete platform. And we've got metal frames in the door. Every frame. door frame is metal and that doesn't help. It um, takes about a third more than a normal, normal bungalow to eat. So you've got, to, you've got to cut costs somewhere. Because of the cost of living, I don't bake anymore. I don't cook as healthy a meal as I used to cook, I don't think. You used to love Christine's food. She was a very good cook. We used to have a roast three times a week. And I miss cooking. I miss, miss I used to enjoy, I used to love cooking. I always, always cooked a Sunday joint, didn't I? Yeah. I've always have done right through my life. Don't do that anymore. Um, because it's too expensive. Electricity prices, it's just horrendous. Thank you, my dear. 
shut out your bed, please. Bed. Why should energy companies be making all this horrendous profits to their shareholders when the ordinary people are suffering? It's not right. There's, there's something wrong somewhere. Can't see our sons as much as we'd like to because of the, the cost of petrol. Cut back on our meals. This will be my dinner for today. Might be eating tonight. Can't afford to eat every day. I'm walk on on my when I pay bridge online. They ask you where do you live, and I put near the village of the dead. I said, don't, don't mean that. I said, yes, there's nothing here at all. When we moved here, there were two pubs, a shop, and the community centre. The pub closed down nearly five years ago now. There's a bit, it's been empty now for. 2018. It's a pity, like, there's a good place to have a drink and there's very good meals in here. We lost, we lost that shop, that's closed down. So if you want any shopping, you get on the bus, go down to the convenience store two miles down the road, or you've got Lidl's, which is about two and a half miles down the road. But if you haven't got a car and you've got loads of shopping, you probably have to get a taxi. And a taxi is not cheap nowadays. It costs you ten pounds just to go down there and ten pounds to come back again. We've got a bus service, supposedly one an hour. It hasn't been one an hour since the beginning of COVID, um, which makes life very, very difficult if you don't drive. They're talking about taking a buses away from us, so we'll be isolated. I look at the, how much water I'm putting in there. That's to show, save energy. Another thing is saving money. I recycle the tea bag that's been used once. Instead of throwing it away, put it back in the cup. That's another cup of tea. I used to have a lathe here. There's about 60, 70 unfinished bowls there because I can't afford to run it. All this timber here is all ready to be done, but it cost me an arm and a leg to, to, to turn it. You can never make another bowl again, does that bother you? Yeah. It does bother me. Excuse me. I tried to make it light a bit, but it's something I've done for years. I can't do it anymore. Yeah, I'm just being silly on. I do despair at times, but then I think, well, I'm, I'll be 83 this year. How long have I got to go? Is there anything to look forward to? That's how I want to exist and stand up. 
some days I never even get a chance to speak to anybody. Can we live downstairs in one room? Stay in the house all day, every day? To try and cut down on the gas bill for his share. When we were younger, sharing a bath was fun. Sharing a bath now is a necessity. <laughs> Oh, here's a Tom and Jerry, my Tom and Jerry collection. On, on this sideboard here, and on there, as you, as you can see, Tom, Jerry, Spike. I got these money boxes there as well, that one, and then there's this one. This one here, which was a nice one, nothing in there. <laughs> I get these at all, all these at Ten Mouth Metro Market. That's where they all come from. Maybe I shouldn't buy Tom and Jerry stuff. Maybe that would help. But I don't think so. I've got to have them. You got everybody's got to have some in this, no matter what it is. Suppose I'm trying to recapture my youth. It was just so empty, so lost in my childhood. I was fostered out when I was six months old. My foster father died when I was four years old. So it was just me and my foster mother all my life, till I was about 20. I love this instead of uh, Tom and Jerry then, because yeah. I collect them as well. Yeah, that's 50 pence. 50 pence, right? 20, 40. Can you be enough for a coffee for yourself? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, I have yet. I regret me foster mother not telling me things I shouldn't know. She never used to ask me did I have a good deal or anything. But she didn't love us. She never said she loved me. You know, did she really want me? Nothing really. No love shown or nothing. I don't know what the meaning of the word love is. I wouldn't know how to love somebody. Other people got families, friends, grandmothers, granddads. I didn't have none of that. I was always stuck on my own. Always stuck on my own. I couldn't make friends too easily. You know, I was very shy, very, very shy when I was younger. I love coming here, like, say, tranquil, nice scenery, it's lovely. And I like to see the people walk on their dogs. I like to see the, the fish, I like to see the boats come in and go out. I can see that from your, your house, right? But it's, when I'm standing here, I can get even closer. You know, so it's more magical. I'm always alone, walking along the beach and back again, yeah. If I could change anything about my life at the moment, I think I would like a bit more company. This is what I, I'm lacking, more people that speak to, talk to, share their interests, they share mine. That would be nice, I think. You know, I could make friends if I went out more. It all comes down to money, money, money. It always has. Money always has a factor, yes. You got nothing you can't go very far. You got money, you can go a bit further, further afield. And you just can't do it at the moment with the cost of living and that. I like to go to see the wood. Four year, four year now. Tuesday and a Friday. 
Good morning. See the water is a community centre. Um, so just a quick one today. Uh, we've got two new ladies. We've got Violet and Wendy. So welcome to the group, ladies. To help you sort things out. To try to help you get more benefits. See if you're coping all right. Beat your sandwich. Oh yeah, thank you very much. Lovely stuff. Thank you. You go to a breakfast club on a Tuesday morning. And you get a cup of tea there. You don't even have to pay for that cup of tea. You don't pay for your sandwich. Do you want sugar? Two, please. <laughs> it's the only time I get out, mix amongst people. Apart from that, you know, very lo a lonely life, isolated. I've lived here 35 years. In all that time, I've only had two people knock at my door. Say, like being in solitary confinement. Not that I know what solitary confinement is, but it just feels just a lack of somebody to talk to. I like to smoke. Smoke with a cup of tea, yeah. It's the only thing I do. I get them cheap. I'll pay five pounds a pack for mine. You know, not twelve pound. Five pound. Even even that's a lot of money. It would be a longer day than what it is now. When I'm on smoke so long, I've been smoking since I was seventeen. And I'm 68 now, so there you go. I give up for a fortnight once. It's the worst fortnight of my life. I know, I know they tell you it's not good for your health. I know all, all the pros and cons. But I still can't give them up. It's life. Cup of tea. Smoke. Can't change it. It's best not to start. Best not to start. You come in, you shut the door, you're on your own. You've got your radio for company, your TV when there's something going like. But uh, apart from that, you just sometimes stare into space. All the time staring into space. Right. It can be a lonely, lonely life, yeah. Another nail in the coffin. I say, I don't like your dog. No, I don't like your dog. You've got to put the light on. Artificial. Just seems to get cold at it this time of year. When it gets, it gets dark, just seems to be colder. It's not a fair, it's not a fair loneliness. No one to talk to, no one to pass the remote control. Someone recommended Paddy and Action Group to me, uh, so I've been going down there to see Karen. John, Karen, nice to meet you. We are you now like a community hub, so yeah. offering a range of services for anybody in the community. We find that a lot of older people are not claiming the benefits that they're entitled to, and that could be attendance allowance, PIP, uh, disability premiums, pension credits. So we'll, we'll make an appointment, we'll come in, We'll get you to fill out the form with an advisor and then we'll send it off and see if we can get your attendance allowance, which will help you hopefully improve your income. I've never heard of attendance allowance before. So <coughs> attendance allowance is a benefit if you're over the pensionable age and you've got an illness or a disability which affects your daily living. So you have and you should be getting this money. So we will help you fill it in and make sure that you're answering everything correctly and then hopefully get that for you and get that as a form of income for you as well. Now the cost of living crisis has came, we've seen people who were trying to struggle by with the money that they've got 
and with the resources that they've got. So we try to have a look at how we can maximise their income. Hi John, do you want to take a seat? We can go through obviously um, the different benefits and what those benefits then passport you want to. One benefit um, triggers other benefits on top of what you got on your attendance allowance. Right, and there's loads of people out there. The entitlement and they haven't got a clue. Yeah, yeah. Same as me. Yeah. You're going to be better off, um, you know, basically £131.25 a week. Right. Better off. Find that right over there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right then. I, did, I was going to tear the form up. You were? You well, were going to turn it was yeah. quite, Three times I nearly tore it up. Well, I'm getting a lot more money now than what I did. And I've been entitled before oh, a matter of quite a few years. And I didn't even know. I have no idea. I know that there's lots of information online, but we all know older people who don't go online. In John's case, if somebody had sat, when his sister had passed and he was on his own and asked him what was going on, then that would have highlighted that he needed some additional support and nobody did. So whose responsibility is it? And, and how are we going to solve it? I mean, I think it's shocking that we've got a 76-year-old man who could have been getting an additional benefit for 10 years and nobody picked it up. We sometimes go on home visits to the client's house. We need to know what they have in their house, so have they got the right equipment, have they, you know, is there any other needs that they might have? So we just, we would like to get the full picture. In the kitchen, in your cupboards, have you got things like um, spices, salt, pepper, <laughs> anything like that? Can we have a look? <laughs> you know that. Oh, then, let's go and have a look and see what you need. And then we can make a little bit of a list about maybe what you, what you could do. Right, see the fridge? Nice and clean. Beautiful. Lovely. <laughs> John? Yeah, John. Well, that's my sister's last bottle of coke. Oh, bless you. How long's that been there? Well, uh, six years nearly. Is your fridge switched on? No, no. But well, you know now, John, you know now that you've actually got the money so you can go shopping. So you've got the money to put on your fridge, you've got the money to go shopping, we can get you vegging, we can get you some fruit and vegging, we can get you some meat, anything you want. And you've got the money to buy that, so you don't need to rely on food banks or anything because you've got your benefits sorted. So can we, can we at least try and do that? Aye, aye. Yeah? I'm worried about using the, the gas and electric heating and that because I'm not sure with the money I've got coming in will cover it. Can I just go and daft and I just spend everything you've got now left? It's common sense. But how old are you, John? Seventy-six. Seventy-six. Seventy-six, right? Come you should it. be sitting in your own house, nice and warm, watching your telly, having a bath, having something to eat when you want, nice clean, fresh clothes, nice clean, fresh towels. That's what you should be, and you can't afford it now. So that's what you're going to do. Pensioners, they have always been a little bit more worried about where money goes. Right, see you tomorrow. Right, off yet. Nice and early, yeah. For oh, a cup eh? Off yet, right. You're making it. <laughs> Even if you've I got money, it. you don't want to spend it because you don't know what's around the corner. It's a very precarious situation in the country at the minute. And I can understand why people don't want to spend, don't want to do anything because they don't know what's coming next. It's unsure. John's story, it's a daily thing for us and everybody probably around the country. Don't eat much, you know. I buy it in the soup and your makeup last two days. Staying in the cold, hair's falling out, crying every day, to be honest. Oh, that's related to getting to the point where I don't want to get off in the morning, I really don't. I 
I've been over the 70, I've only been once a year. I used to go like four or five times. My three brother, he's the one, first one that died. He died four days before his 41st birthday. He was a minor. And my mum and dad died within 27 hours of each other. So there's three in there. And that one's my sister. She died uh, five years and a month. I'm going in there when it's my turn. Just come here, check the graves is all right. That is there, anybody, no mess on the grave, anything lying about, pick it up, any rubbish. Just, that's just what you do. You know, everybody does the same thing. Keep an eye on the graves, make sure everything's all right. That one's a pause over the cemetery. The council says uh, you, you, you're spending too much time over there. It's not good for your head. Mental health's not good. Mental health's worse than any physical. I think the thing I'm really seeing at the minute is the high level of depression in older people. I went to one house, a lady had phoned because she'd had like a little bit of an issue um, with, her, with her property. And I went down and she said to us, Karen, I just want to walk down to the river and just keep on walking. And don't want to turn, like I don't want to turn back. And I was like, no, we'll get you sorted. And she's like, I've just had enough. And that was really hard for us to hear that a lady in her 70s wanted to kill herself. That's so bad. Before I go to bed, I put my uh, details out, my funeral arrangements, last will and testament, people at the phone and that in case of my death. There's my certificate of my funeral, funeral plan all paid for. And to just put any numbers on there, what I put down, people I know on that, funeral directors, whatever, golden charter, all the telephone numbers is on there. It's just when my sister died, I started doing all this. She just thought that I was sick, yeah. My father been doing this and she was here. See, that's for, because my sister's not here. I've got no family, they're all gone. So there's nobody to do stuff like this. Make me funeral arrangements and stuff like that. So I've got to do it this way, because everything's there. Anybody comes in the house, that's the first thing they're going to say. The phone, that number, that number, John J. York, funeral directors, and they come out and everything's done. Mad, isn't it? Eh? I was very upset that I had to stop turning, do my wood turning. So I decided I'd made by changing my energy supplier. I could afford to do a little bit of turning now and again. I looked at another one on the internet that was offering a better price. By changing my energy supplier, I could afford to do a little bit of turning now and again but not full time, not like I used to do. I've got to watch how much I use. When I'm wood turning, I'm oblivious to what's happening elsewhere. I'm just concentrating on turning out a decent piece of work. Better in my mind now, more settled now that I won't have to give it up completely. I fell over in the garden, caught my head on the sundial. 
and ended up at A and E for two hours, <clears throat> which was quite good, really. Three hours, <laughs> right. two, just over two hours. These things happen as you get older. You know, you. I was more, more, more worried about going to hospital and them keeping me in, and then Harry <laughs> being on his own here. Yeah. But um, I didn't really want to go to the hospital, but. I'm glad I did. Harry's just told me I'm not allowed to go into town on my own anymore because he's frightened of me falling in town. <clears throat> if I can't go into town on my own anymore, it's taken away that little bit of independence that I had. The situation is worse now than it was. I definitely feel more isolated than I did. But it can look at it. Yeah. Got to do. Haven't we? It's six years to the day since my sister died. And I'm going to put some flowers on uh, for the six year anniversary. <sighs> the name on the little message. It'll be the same. Next year, seven year, eight year, and that's me. That's me routine. That's what I do. Aye, dementia. Physically, sorry, it's just when your brain's not working. It's, it's no good, is it? She wasn't like the same person anymore. Totally different. Changed completely. Didn't even know who I was. I wish you were here, John. Can't believe it. You know, I'd be worried about the cost all the time. When your energy's going up, that's going to go up again. That'll go up in April. I expect the letter any time. What I'm doing now, I didn't put anything on and I'll not change, I'll just leave it like that. Right and I put me hating on. I just had pneumonia and I was taken into hospital. I didn't feel lately. I knew I was. I knew there was something wrong, but exactly what I didn't know. And then I'm just going to get a signature. Okay, just to see, I'll give you your things. I got. I went up to the hospital, North Hainside General. They said I had a bit of a cold, which was leading to pneumonia. So I found myself in the hospital, didn't I? The four days. I was a little bit worried, of course. Well, thankfully, today I got discharged. Okay, well, take care. How are you? Lovely to meet you. Thank you, and you, yeah? Yeah, you're welcome, no problem at all. Thanks very much. Okay, bye for now. Bye. Bye for now. Where did it come from? The cold. Been out in the uh, out in the cold too long, prolonged cold. If I choose the heating, it costs more. If I don't put the heating on, I die. What do you do? What do you do? You have to make decisions. Which is the right one you make? I've made sure I put the heating on. I'm not having this again. I'm not going to hospital again. No way. No. No. I'd like people to, to understand more. To understand more. But it won't be. I don't think it would be.
it's very bleak, the future. Very bleak. If it continues like this, I can't say improving any.